Well, good morning and thank you for joining us today both here at this conference and through the live stream that's being fed out through the CERA website. This morning's announcement brings to an end a process that we started uh, quite some time ago, about 11 months ago in fact, uh, where we were uh, looking at the zoning of flatland uh, in the Greater Christchurch area based on its ability uh, to sustainably uh, provide amenity for people in residential situations. As I've said over recent months, the decisions have been anything but easy as we have progressed towards the end. But fundamentally the issues have remained the same. All land zoned orange suffered uh, damage from the earthquakes that ranged from being uh, moderate uh, to serious. And uh, there was always a question about how much would need to be done, uh, if it could be done, to repair uh, land to leave it in a condition that would still be appropriate for residential occupation. Most of those programs uh, look to be extremely expensive and would take many years of work, years in which people would have to be off that land uh, and would uh, uh, only be returning if the remediation was in fact successful. So the same goes for today's very difficult announcement in South Shore West. South Shore West suffered major lateral spreading along its estuary boundary in the earthquakes of the February 22nd, 2011. In some places the spread was over a metre in width and in others uh, relatively minor. Nonetheless, there was significant lateral spread uh, in that part of the city. There are 401 properties in the South Shore West Orange Zone. Some of them are far enough back from the estuary edge to have avoided serious land damage. However, 198 properties along the estuary shore are on land that is unsuitable for future residential occupation. That effectively means that those properties are going red. The remaining uh, 203 are going to be zoned green in technical category three uh, according to the Department of Building and Housing Foundation guidelines. That means that options do exist for those properties to be repaired uh, and for the continued residential occupation on those sites. Today's announcement brings a number of residential properties zone red because they are unsuitable for residential occupation to 7,256. The owners of today's red zone properties are now eligible for one of the government's offers of purchase. And the recently announced changes uh, to the offer period means that they will have 12 months from the date of receiving their letter uh, of offer to choose an option and return a sale and purchase agreement to the Crown. Those offers will be made as quickly as is possible. The CERA Community Wellbeing Team and the Red Cross will visit every property in South Shore uh, West today uh, and every effort will be made to contact all homeowners who are no longer living uh, in their homes. After the uh, earthquake events of December 23, 2011, we undertook to conduct a thorough review of the state of the land in Parklands East. The re review has shown the original decision to zone the area green remains appropriate. 530 properties in Parklands East were zoned green in Department of Building and Housing DBH Technical Category 3 during last year. Geotechnical analysis shows that Parklands East original zoning is consistent with the approach used in all of the flatland zoning and that despite further liquefaction in December, it does not meet the criteria to be uh, zoned red. It's possible for houses in Parklands East to be repaired or rebuilt on an individual basis. There is no need for area-wide land treatment. Technical guidance on the appropriate foundation treatments for TC3 properties has been prepared by DBH and should be followed. Christchurch City Council has confirmed that the land and underneath the roads in Parklands East is suitable for containing infrastructure. Further information about building and repairing properties in TC3 areas will be del delivered to Parklands East residents today and tomorrow and there will be two community meetings held next week to further inform residents 
of their status and their options. As of now, there are still 2,100 houses on the Port Hills in white zones awaiting some decision. But today I'm also announcing uh, the first major rezoning of those remaining Port Hills properties. 421 properties are being zoned green, which leaves 1,679 houses still under review. This announcement is part of an ongoing program of technical modelling and mapping work to determine risks from rockfall and cliff collapse in the Port Hills and the feasibility of addressing those hazards. Parallel work streams by the Christchurch City Council and Sarah are progressively creating a clear picture of where the greatest risks to habitation in the events of major earthquakes exist and how those risks might be mitigated. Council commissioned work by the Institute of Geological and Nuclear Science, GNS, and the Port Hills Geotechnical Group of Engineers is, compl is complementing Sarah commissioned three-dimensional rockfall studies done by Geovert, uh, a Christchurch company, with support from uh, Austrian rockfall specialists and advice from experts at Italy's University of Milan. A big effort is going into understanding the problems in the Port Hills and how they can be mitigated. As more information becomes available, we'll be able to announce decisions for the remaining properties in the white zone and I would expect to be able to do that in the time that has been uh, already stated. I now want to say a few words about insurance. It's now 20 months since the September 2010 earthquake. It's been a very trying time for all those involved. From the outset I've appreciated that the complexities of the insurance cover uh, and how it affects all those who've suffered damage is not easily understood by all parties. I recognise that uh, responding to a claim is not always as simple as some might think it appears. The government has tried to make things easier by leading the land assessment process, making full purchase offers to red zone property owners and promulgating technical standards for foundation requirements for different land conditions across the city. EQC have copped a lot of flack gearing up from an organisation of 22 people to over 1,200 people in a very short time, and I think off a standing start, they've done reasonably well. So far, they've settled 99,310 claims at a cost of $3.1 billion. Through the Project Management Office, they've prepared fully 14,982 homes, and at this time, they have a further 33,000 175 homes under repair. They are pretty good numbers for this stage along the journey. In addition, they have paid out 13,745 building claims at or over the cap of $100,000 plus GST. EQC is also expediting core drilling programs so all insurers can better understand the state of the land across the DH, uh, DBH, Department of Building and Housing, technical categories uh, for foundation requirements. While I accept that issues relating to apportionment of liability across earthquake events between EQC and insurers have been difficult to resolve, as have issues of assess assessment methodology and determinations about land damage, including the weight for technical category foundation specifications. Now that these issues are resolving, the time has come for greater progress. In recent days I've met with both the Insurance Council of New Zealand representatives and the Board of EQC. I've been assured that relevant information sharing will occur and is occurring so that things can get moving more quickly. My challenge to the private insurance industry is now that outstanding issues between them and EQC, which I must say are genuine issues and have been difficult, uh, but now that they are resolving, uh, we would like to see them more speedily put some runs on the board. I would suggest that clients across New Zealand will not easily accept pay uh, cost rises in their insurance cover if they can't see policies delivered on in Christchurch. Uh, with those comments, uh, I'm happy to take any questions you might have.